Anderson Silva was such a marvel inside the cage, such a mythical combatant that we couldn't even dare imagine that someone at any point in history would ever come close to him. Anderson, when he was in his prime, you would watch him. It's almost like he had cheat codes, like he could just see what they were doing. Upon defending his middleweight championship 10 times, Silva was basically a demigod, unfathomably untouchable. But then came along a worthy... No. No. This ain't right anymore. It's high time we stop doing this. Let me rewind for a bit. Israel Adesanya is once again the king at 185. At UFC 287, he became the first two-time middleweight champion when he defeated his supposed apocalypse, Alex Pereira, in the second round, returning the favor by way of a vicious knockout. Three and one. Three minus one is two. That's two-time UFC motherfucking middleweight champ, bitch. Just five years in, and the last Albender has done it all. Over the course of his career, Adesanya has taken on all contenders, whether they were strikers, brawlers, or wrestlers, and he has beaten them all. And as of April of 2023, he stands in the same realm as Anderson Silva. Not a step ahead, and not a yard behind. He's just right there with him. And that's all you need to know. Israel Adesanya has proven himself to be one of the greatest fighters in MMA history. Welcome to the fighting business. We have this really bad habit of constantly comparing the present to the past and getting into flame wars over it. Israel Adesanya does not have to surpass Anderson Silva to be considered one of the all-time greats himself. At this point, his body of work inside the octagon speaks for itself. But to leave no doubt, let's take a glance back, as we always do on TFB. Always a reminder to slide through on TFB stocks. Come check out some of my bias stakes on the world of combat sports. Man, this sport is different. This sport is different. But for now, let's go through history. Let's take a look at some of his most notable adversaries, what they said before, and what changed after. <laughs> and by the end of this, you tell me, has the style bender made it? Derek Brunson. The first true test for Israel Adesanya was Derek Brunson. For his first few fights, he styled on the likes of Rob Wilkinson and Brad Tavares, but Brunson, a seasoned middleweight, was a definite step up in competition. And to the delight of Dana White, there was some lingering animosity between the two from years ago. So he came back, he took it years later, and he's like, Derek blew me off. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Well, he won't look at me. So he, he, won't look, he won't make eye contact with me. He's talking, hey, I'm gonna get the finish, blah, blah, blah. But he knows he's in store for a tough one. Even before the fight was announced, these two had a small confrontation at a bar somewhere. And once they shared the stage at a press conference, it all began. Say it again, let me hear it. Look at my easy money sitting over there. Too much, partner. Too hey, much. Brunson, turn it down, turn it down. To Brunson, Israel was nothing more than a glory reject. A glory reject, you ain't 0-2. And on top of that, he was weak and skinny. He's not the, and you're built like a senior citizen. I'm not worried about you, boy. The skinny comments clearly struck a nerve, but Israel maintained his composure. And Brunson carried on, promising to maul the one-dimensional striker. Whether I take him down, trap his arms like Khabib, and I finish him. Because I'm the type of guy, when I take you down, I'm going to maul you, so. In the first fight on the main card, Israel Adesanya made the walk through the octagon. Now on the big stage, and for all the talk of weak and skinny, he made an example out of Derek Brunson. You'd be a fool to underestimate a former kickboxing champion, no matter how he looked. One round was all that Israel needed to finish off Brunson, and to add insult to injury, he flipped him off during the one-sided beatdown. The hype was real. Israel Adesanya had now entered the top 10 of the middleweight division, and Brunson did not stick around to comment on the loss. More than two years later though, after a victory over Darren Till, Brunson revealed that he was underprepared for the fight, and he gave a rather bold prediction for the rematch. You know, I had a hurricane I was dealing with. I didn't train for two weeks. That was the first phase where I went from being really strong and I stopped lifting weights for like two years. I was like, I don't need to lift weights. I'm fighting easy, so really I can try this out. In a rematch, we're very confident what we can do and, you know, know the, 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 the threat that we pose. Unfortunately for Brunson, Adesanya had moved on by that point and they were no longer even in the same stratosphere. Anderson Silva. Anderson, the Silva. When Israel knocked out Rob Wilkinson in his UFC debut, comparisons were immediately drawn to Anderson Silva, the 
consensus greatest middleweight of all time. By the time Israel entered the UFC, Anderson Silva was just about done with his career, but how blessed are we? After his victory over Derek Brunson, Israel was granted the honor of facing Anderson Silva, someone he considered an inspiration. This guy inspired me to be, to be able to believe like, a skinny black guy can just come in here and fuck everyone up. The respect and awe between the two fighters was apparent and nice to see, but there was an avoidable sense of sadness throughout every interaction these two had together. It was the end of an old era and the start of a new one, and the once invincible Anderson Silva just looked happy to be there being a small part of the new era. He's trying to make me cry. Fuck him. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Look, I'm a fan of this man. But just because I'm a fan doesn't mean you can't catch these hands. In the main event of UFC 234, it was old school versus new school. A dream matchup only possible on EA UFC 3. Now happening in real life, Anderson Silva was clearly past his prime, but that didn't stop them from putting on a show. And he went on to a decision with the new phenom on the block, even securing a round on the scorecards. Israel Adesanya was the clear winner, and right after the fight, whoa. The fight itself, the 15 minutes of combat between Adesanya and Silva, was a changing of the guard. But this moment right there was the passing of the torch. This was built up as a night where potentially Israel Adesanya could have a breakthrough. Yeah, I, I think the kid broke through before we got here tonight. That's why, you know, when we lose the main event, the place is still sold out. We were looking at the next Anderson Silva. At least, back then we were. Kelvin Gastelum. After his victory over the Spider, Israel was in contention for title shots, but the middleweight division was in a bit of a bind. Whitaker, the champion, was struggling with injuries, and the company had no choice but to introduce an interim title to keep the division moving. Kelvin Gastelum was scheduled to face Whitaker at UFC 234 was a natural inclusion, and Israel, sufficiently popular and decently proven, was given a shot, only five fights in. Listen guys, I'm here, I'm the, the true number one contender, and I shouldn't be skipped in line. On paper, this was somewhat of a mismatch. Gastelum, while impressive, was a brawler, and far shorter than Adesanya, who was a much more refined striker, possessing the skills and the attributes to pick him apart from the distance. Gastelum, however, brought up one important point. You know, obviously he's, he's fought some great fighters, but the top five guys are, are, any one of those top five guys can be the champion, and I don't think he's fought those kind of guys. I feel like he hasn't been through the fire that I've been through. You know, he hasn't fought the quality of opponents that I have fought. It was true. Israel had a close fight with Vittori, but he had yet to suffer inside the octagon. But was Kelvin the guy to push him? Most didn't think so. Too short, too wild, just not good enough. You have to shed some blood in the octagon, and Israel had yet to bleed. Maybe a high-level striker down the line was going to put him through the fire, but nobody expected Gaslam to be the one, and even fewer people expected Israel to rise to the occasion. The short, stocky brawler was more than a match for the former kickboxer, and for five full rounds, Gaslam and Adesanya left it all inside the octagon, and Israel did bleed. In fact, he left a piece of himself in the octagon that night as everyone eventually does. Honestly, but I knew I was willing to give it all and leave it all in there. This fight proved it. Israel Adesanya did not just possess the skill, he had the heart and will of a champion. I'm, I'm good at this game, man. I can play this game for real. This ain't EA Sports. This is the UFC as real as it gets. And in the end, that interim title belt was around his waist. The loss haunted Gaslam, but his stock only rose after the fight, as nobody else even came close to rocking Adesanya like he did. It was a hard-fought battle for both men, and the brutal experience of getting his face punched in did not shake Adesanya one bit. In fact, after this fight, he became even more of a beast, just like all the greats do after a war like that. Interim title on one shoulder, the undisputed champion had a tall task to conquer in his return. Robert Whittaker After securing the interim title, Israel was guaranteed a shot at the undisputed champion Robert Whittaker. Before the arrival of Israel Adesanya, Robert Whittaker was the guy many considered to be the next great middleweight champion. With back-to-back -back victories over Yoel Romero of all people, Whittaker was considered one of the best pound-for-pound -pound in the UFC. But following the second victory over Romero, Whittaker had to deal with a series of health complications and only fought twice in two years. Meanwhile, Israel had become one of the biggest superstars in the company, even without the undisputed title. Once Bobby Knuckle returned to the octagon, the unification bout was official for UFC 243 in Melbourne, Australia. 
And believe it or not, there was a bit of animosity between the two champions. He keeps talking shit about me the whole time, and I've just been chilling, minding my own business, so I can't wait. I'm motivated, and I'm inspired, and I'm ready to go. What was going on here? Straight he makes right memes now. now. My man makes memes. I mean, have you seen his Instagram? He doesn't make him. Someone else makes him, but hey, he's been talking shit. Apparently, that meme in particular started the bad blood. But beyond the heated banter, this was one hell of a fight. Whitaker and Adesanya were head and shoulders above the rest of the division. And now, they were set to collide. And the winner of the championship fight was spearhead the new era. For Bobby Knuckles, it was about a return to the norm after a series of setbacks. And he knew he was in for a serious fight with the interim title holder. He's in the middleweight division and he's winning fights. We're going to have to fight eventually. I think he has great skills. He's a phenomenal fighter. He, uh... Yeah, he's got impeccable timing, he's, he uses his reach and his, his height very well. He's, he's a great fighter, he really is. I, uh, but honestly, I just think I'm better. Make no mistake, Robert Whitaker is one of the best fighters of this generation. But at UFC 243, it was all about Israel Adesanya. As talented and superb Whitaker is, he just could not maintain the offense. And Israel struck in the last moment of the first round, nearly ending the fight right there and then. In the second, he finished off the Reaper and did not suffer a single scratch throughout the fight. Now undisputed champion, Israel Adesanya was truly on another level. As expected of Bobby Knuckles, he showed up at the post-fight press conference, classy and complimentary as usual. While he admitted Israel was the better man, Whitaker assured all that he was not going anywhere. He beat me tonight, but uh, I'm 28. This is my first long loss in the division. You know, trust me when I say I'm not going anywhere. That was not the last Israel saw of Whitaker. Bobby Knuckles was just too good, too talented. But for now, the two went their separate ways. First order of business for Israel Adesanya, defend the undisputed belt for the first time and start building your own legacy. Paulo Costa. The Costa! For his first title defense, Israel Adesanya handpicked the one guy most middleweights wanted no part of, the soldier of God, Yoel Romero. This championship clash played out in the main event of UFC 248, and not a whole lot happened. The fans in attendance were displeased, but the most irate dude in the building was Paulo Costa. Costa showed up at the post-fight press conference and started talking a whole lot. The sun is nothing. The sun is the most shameful champion I have seen ever. They were not the best of friends even before this, but when Costa insinuated that the champions was just a weakling, Israel had him marked. Just run. He's nothing. He's nothing. He's scared. From Yoel Romero to Paulo Costa, skinny Israel Adesanya had no problem competing against the freaks of nature in his division. For the second time in UFC history, after Rashad Evans versus Lyoto Machida, an undefeated champion and an undefeated contender were going to share the octagon. The build up to UFC 253 had these two jawing back and forth. Well, he's still always weak, you know. He don't need to cut away to, to be weak. He's weak every time. Costa, much like Brunson before him, demeaned Israel as someone too skinny, too weak to compete with him. Israel had handled Brunson with minimal effort, but that was Derek Brunson. This was Paulo Costa, an undefeated juggernaut. And as per the odds, Israel was in for a fight of his life. But what do they know? In the main event of UFC 253, Israel once again demonstrated that he was on a completely different level. Paulo Costa was a pressure fighter who bulldozed his way through his opponent, but against the champion, he was frozen and picked apart until a left hand sent the eraser to the canvas. A few more precise punches on the ground led to the referee stepping in to save Costa, but before Israel walked off, he kinda... Costa had no idea what happened to him. He was not present for the post-fight interview or the press conference. Later on, he did show up in a series of quick Instagram videos, and he was pissed as hell. I came here to talk about the action that human trash did. I disapprove 100%. I wait for you. Give me the revenge. As per Costa, too much wine muddled his sense, and that is why Costa lost. I, I try one. One cup of wine, I tried more and more and more. I got, I fought in sleep, but it was just two hours before I wake up again to go. Regardless, after the systematic destruction of Paulo Costa, Israel Adesanya silenced every critic of his for a while. And with a new goal in mind, he ventured into a different division. 
Marvin Vittori 2. Marvin, the Italian dream, Vittori! After dismantling Paulo Costa and shutting down the middleweight division for a short period of time, Israel Adesanya moved up to light heavyweights in a bid to capture a second championship and etch his name as another champ champ. The title holder Jan Blahovic defeated the middleweight king at UFC 259, handing Adesanya his first loss in MMA. After going 20-0, he was made to look mortal and the middleweight started calling him out again. Upon his return to 185, Israel Adesanya went face to face with an old foe, an unusually durable fighter by the name of Marvin Vittori. Oh, and Vittori is also unusually angry. Your fucking shit. You tried to bitch. ignore me, bitch. You tried to ignore me. Here I am. I never, I fucking never nightmare, had that. bitch. Very much so indeed. Fucking nightmare. Find me, find me now, bitch. What are you gonna do? Adesanya and Vittori had met before. In his second fight with the promotion, Adesanya fought Vittori, and truth be told, it was a close contest. While Israel walked away as the victor, Vittori had reasons to feel good about his performance as well. Three years later, Vittori had worked his way into title contention, and the rematch was set for UFC 263. Did I mention that Vittori is the walking personification of rage? Just so you know, from now on I'll call you bitch or boy. Okay? Boy? F you little boy. Convinced that he won the first fight, Vittori went right after the middleweight champion. I won that fight, and uh, I, but now we get to settle the score, and I, I'm gonna settle the score once for all, and I'm gonna show the war who's the best middleweight around and israel coming off his first mma loss had a lot to prove the same face that you had uh, uh, after like the john blackovich fight you had against me the last interaction in the pre-fight press conference led fans to believe that vittori was going to come out guns blazing take the champion's head off right the wrong from three years ago what you gonna do try it again <laughs> but once the cage was locked israel adesanya left no doubt vittori was able to keep up at times and he landed a few takedowns but the last style bender was just too good, too fast, too skillful. It was a clean sweep on the scorecards, 50-45 across the board. Unlike the first fight, not a single media member awarded the victory to Vittori, and this rivalry of sorts was completely over. Immediately after the fight, Israel approached a defeated challenger and tried his best, but Marvin Vittori was in no mood to make peace. Vittori thought he won the second fight as well, but despite these words, there was a look of defeat in his eyes. I appreciate you. Zadisanya had closed the chapter, and the two were never going to share the octagon again. Yeah, man, good game. Good game. He did good. He did good. That's it? He just did good? I mean, you know, listen, what do you want me to say? Like, he's the best. He's the best. Despite the loss at 205, Israel maintained order in the middleweight division, and the rematch tour continued. Robert Whitaker, too. After becoming champion, Israel tore through the middleweight division, beating all challengers without too many issues. During all this, his closest contemporary was doing exactly the same. Bobby Knuckles, the guy who Israel beat to become undisputed champion, was still around, and the Reaper had made one thing pretty clear. Nobody else was beating him. My brother, I am the monster. <laughs> that's, that's what everyone gets confused about. <laughs> Whitaker defeated three contenders in a span of one year, and with the rest of the fighters in the division either booked or already beaten, the Reaper was granted a chance at redemption. Unlike the first fight, they were actually pretty chill with each other. I was, I was letting everything get to me, you know, and my ego was adding as like a multiplier. The two best middleweights on the planet were going to lock horns for the second time at UFC 271, and Whitaker, reinvigorated after a rough few years, seemed to be in a better place mentally. I, I think I was just venting on him, to be honest. I, <laughs> I, was, I was feeling the pressure from a lot of different avenues, and I wasn't happy with a lot of different things, and I was just angling it towards him, to be honest. Um, the buildup was definitely a lot less hostile than before. I look forward to getting in there with him. I, honestly, it, it really interests me this fight. Maybe Bobby Knuckles was frazzled the first time and didn't fight to his full potential. We were going to find out at UFC 271. For the first few rounds, Whitaker looked hesitant and engaging with the champion, but he got a second win and brought the fight to Adesanya, unlike anyone else at middleweight since Gaslam. It was a valiant effort by the underdog, but the champion got his hands raised at the decision, defeating Bobby Knuckles for the second time. The decision victory was hotly debated, and Whitaker himself believed that he had done enough to win. I thought I beat him. I thought I did enough. I got inside his reach, I beat him to every punch. 
That said, Whitaker did not seem to have lost an ounce of confidence after the fights, even hinting at a possible third fight. Honestly, a third fight between me and Izzy is inevitable. It's inevitable because I'm going to stomp anybody who comes in front of me again. Defeating Robert Whitaker twice alone put Israel Adesanya in the conversation for the best middleweights of all time, but there was still so much more to do. He had accomplished a lot in a short time, but the ceiling for Adesanya was nowhere in sight. Jared Cannonier. After getting through the rematch tour, Adesanya finally saw a new face, a former heavyweight monster by the name of Jared Cannonier. By this point, Israel had cleared out the division, and Cannonier was one of the few guys he hadn't faced. The Killer Gorilla was a dangerous contender, and he posed a threat to the champion, but there was something else going on. Do you feel like you're more overlooked than his other challengers? Um. On the same card, a certain kickboxer by the name of Alex Pereira was fighting Sean Strickland. And given the history between the two men, Jared Cannonier was definitely a little overshadowed. His only saving grace was a puncher's chance, they said. But Jared himself thought differently. Like I've said before, I've only shown a fraction of what I'm capable of in the octagon. And I've only shown I've only I've shown more than that in the training, but not all of that. According to most, this was a customary title defense for Israel. A detour before the real blockbuster fights, and Israel definitely made it look like one. As destructive as Cannonier was, he just could not compete with the champion on the feet and was not able to land a single takedown. Another clinical performance and another dominant decision. And as soon as Israel was handed a microphone, he wasted no time in setting up his next title defense. We know who's next, that poor time, poha. Cannonier was lost in the post-fight hype, but he shared a moment of respect with the champion and had no problem admitting that he cried after the loss. Did it take you a long time? to get over the fight? Like, did you have any sort of period where you were like kind of bummed about it or? I mean, you know, right after the fight, I went to the locker room, I cried. And... It takes one hell of a guy to do that. After outclassing the monster that came down from heavyweight, Israel did not take his gloves off for too long. Five title defenses to his name, but his biggest challenge uh, awaited him. saying Alex Bejeda, that's the next fight. I guess, did you see his performance tonight? What'd you think about it? And I guess, how soon do you think you'd like to line up that fight if, if that is indeed the next one? That's the next fight. I saw his fight. Um, it was a good fight. Soon, how soon? We'll find out. Alex Pereira, too. In the fall of 2021, there was a shift in the middleweight division as a certain someone had entered the top MMA organization. The collision course was inevitable. And by the same time next year, November 2022, Israel Adesanya was staring down a familiar face, this time inside the octagon. Alex Pereira had stalked him all the way to the UFC, and in the main event of UFC 281, the unbeaten middleweight lost it all. This was marked by many as the downfall of the long reigning champion. He had lost three times to Alex Pereira, and he was just taunting fate when he called for an immediate rematch against his boogeyman. The second MMA fight was set for UFC 287, and for Alex, this was going to be the last chapter, the last he was going to see of Israel Adesanya. I believe that me beating him this Saturday, I will never face him again. Despite the language barrier, the two went at it during the pre-fight press conference as there was so much on the line. What's gonna happen this weekend is we're gonna fight and see who the best man is at the end. Even for the champion himself, the tally was lopsided, but we all knew how dangerous Israel Adesanya was. Or maybe some of us forgot. For the fourth time in seven years, the kickboxing champions turned MMA champions faced off in front of a sold-out arena in Miami, Florida. And just like before, no touch of gloves and immediate combat. Like every encounter before, it was close and competitive. And in the second round, Pereira pressured the challenger towards the cage and landed a series of shots. But between all that, a right hand from hell ended the night for Pereira. And just like that, the nightmare faded to the sounds of Israel Adesanya letting everyone know. Adesanya had finally conquered his biggest demon, and he was once again the middleweight champion, and on top of the world. It was a long road to suffer through, but by the time UFC 287 went off the air, the last outbender was the biggest thing in the MMA world. The just bleed god could not have scripted this any better. Backstage, 
The two rivals paid respect to one another. Honestly, you're a great champion. And forever, doesn't matter what anyone says, you're always a champion. You're always a champion. Yeah. 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 It's a and I always respect you. And a day later, Poitain released a statement on the fight, offering no excuses and giving respect to Israel for his performance. Desde o início, desde a minha preparação, sempre que eu falei nas entrevistas, coletiva de imprensa, que nada de desculpa, né? All things considered. UFC 287 was maybe the last we saw of them inside a combat zone. And looking back on all of it, this was a rivalry for the ages. The Kelvin Gastelum fight brought out an evolution. But the saga with Alex Pereira has pushed Adesanya to a whole new level. The second reign of Israel Adesanya has begun, but the division is wiped out with some contenders beaten twice by the style bender. Maybe we should have seen this coming when Israel first arrived, but damn it, nobody told us that he would be this good. Unbreakable in mind and spirit, Adesanya quietly rose to the ranks of the greatest fighters of all time. But his last fight was the moment it all sunk in for all of us, because he imprinted his greatness into the collective consciousness of the MMA world. When that right hand landed and the double glory champ collapsed in a heap, we all realized he is not the next Anderson Silva, he is the one and only Israel Adesanya. <laughs>